Hi friends, I'm Yadi. If you are new here, welcome to my channel, Manicare and Murder Convos. Today we will touch a little on nail stamping and then we will gossip about killers Ruth Brown Schneider and Henry Judd Gray. So grab your manicure kits or snack or both as you know we pass no judgments here and let's jump right into it. Whether you do your own manicures at home or you get your nails done in a salon, you have to give nail stamping a try. I can't express how amazing it is. If you're going to give it a try, let me give you a few, a few pointers on it first. First, when you buy your stamper, wash it in warm water with dish washing detergent and allow it to air dry. This will prevent any issues with the stamper collecting images and you will only have to do this once. Two, make sure that you have tape to clean the stamper after every use. I use regular scotch tape, but even clothing tape lint roller works. Three, Purchase a sticky clear coat that you will place over your finished manicure before you start stamping. This will allow you to prep your stamper with designs before you even start your manicure. If you do not purchase a sticky clear coat, then you will not be able to prep your stamper and allow it to dry because then it will not stick to your manicure. Yes, you could try to apply a dry design on tacky nail polish, but why would you risk smudging your manicure or that the design doesn't transfer over perfectly? Trust me, buy the sticky clear coat for stamping and you will thank me later. In this video, in the description, I'm going to add which sticky clear coat I use. And no, this is, I'm not getting paid to tell you which sticky clear coat. You can use whichever one you want. Anyway, when using the sticky coat, base coat apply over your finished manicure and wait two minutes then proceed to stamp it over the sticky base coat once you transfer the design onto your nail go over the design with your top coat polish it can be regular top coat or a quick dry top coat if you don't have sticky base coat just make sure that your manicure is dry and immediately that you collect the design on the stamper transfer it over onto your nail and then seal it with your favorite top coat if this all sounds a bit confusing then keep watching because i'm going to stamp my nails in this video so enough on stamping let's get into the murder story and oh before i start don't forget to subscribe that way you may join me every time that i paint my nails now for real let's start this time let's start the events begin in the year 1925 when Ruth Brown Schneider, Long Island housewife, met a married man, corset salesman named Henry Judd Gray, while having lunch in New York. Ruth at the time was 32 years old and Henry was 34 years old. Before jumping into their affair, it's only fair that I give you the scoop about Ruth's marriage to her husband, Albert Schneider, which also involved a young daughter. Albert was the breadwinner of the family, and he was employed as an art editor of the magazine Motor Boating, which he claimed kept him away from his home for long hours. And Ruth was an unhappy housewife because her husband was in love with a dead woman, and he could not get over her. Albert was once engaged to a woman named Jessie. For unknown reasons, he never married her, and he married Ruth instead. But during some time that Jesse was alive and that Albert was married to Ruth, he had an affair with Jesse, which ended when she died of cancer. After her death, Albert insisted in hanging up pictures of her around the house that he shared with Ruth, which I'm going to bet caused a lot of arguments. Then, to top it all some more, he also has a sack of balls on him and, he, and names his bowl after Jesse for everyone to see. So with that said, Ruth started having numerous affairs with many different men. Those affairs would take place in motels, which she would leave her daughter in the lobby waiting for her. But one of those men would stand out from the rest, and that's the man that I mentioned before, Henry. One of the initial things that stands out in this love affair is that instead of their encounters taking place in motels they were taking place in Ruth's home while her husband was at work and her daughter was in school this particular affair was also different in the sense that Ruth came to the realization that she no longer desired to have her husband in her life and this is when things start spinning out of control Ruth starts telling Henry that Albert abuses her of course with Henry hearing this to no one he believes her without any question Ruth exploits the fact that Henry loves her and that he is all, and he's also angered about something that he has no control over. 
Ruth, realizing that Henry is infuriated by her situation, she makes a decision to tell Henry that she wishes that Albert was dead. Henry believes that Ruth's verbal expressions are that only of an abused wife, but that also changes when she actually makes a request that he kill Albert for her. That way they could live out their lives together and she doesn't have to live abuse. Following Ruth's request to Henry, she at one point or another sets her mind on convincing Albert that it would be wise for him to take out, well not to take out, to purchase a life insurance policy and obviously make her the beneficiary. Although, although questioned later on, it was never it has never been proven that Henry was or was not aware of the life insurance that per, that Albert had purchased at the direction of Ruth. Initially, Henry refuses to kill Albert, but after all of Ruth's pestering, Henry gives into her demands and they start working on a plan to eliminate Albert. And on March 19, 1927, Henry travels from Syracuse, New York to Long Island, New York by bus and as Ruth and Albert were at a party, Henry enters their home through a back door that Ruth had left open for him. Henry then hides in a spare room in the house with Ruth's weapon of choice, rubber gloves, chloroform, and window weight. At 2 a.m., the ball starts rolling. Albert and Ruth return home from the party and Albert goes into their room and goes to bed. While Ruth goes on to check if Henry is actually in the house as they had planned. When she finds him in the spare room that they agreed in, they engage in sexual intercourse without her husband noticing. Not long after, as Albert is sleeping, Henry creeps into the couple's bedroom and he bashes Albert in the head with the, with the wooden weight. But instead of it killing Albert instantly, it injures him and he tries to get up to defend himself from Henry. Ruth, not wanting this opportunity to go to waste, grabs the window weight and again hits Albert about his head. This time, the blow causes his death. After Albert's death, Ruth and Henry proceed to go around the house trying to stage a robbery. And after they were done, Henry loses. Um, Henry loosely ties Ruth's hand and feet and gags her before leaving the house. Once Henry leaves the house, Ruth drags herself to her daughter's room door and bangs on it, trying to play the helpless victim. Her daughter, obviously frightened, removes the gag and Ruth screams out to her, to run out of the house and get help. Her daughter runs to the neighbor's house where ultimately they call the authorities. Once the police arrive, Ruth goes into the robbery story. Initially, she's believed, but upon their investigations, there are doubts. For starters, some of the items that Ruth claims were taken were found hidden around the house. Then the officers found a strange document containing Henry's name. And no, I don't know what the document was. Anyway. Ruth was immediately questioned about this, and surprisingly to everyone, she confesses but eliminates herself from the story that and places all the blame on Henry. Detectives went to look for Henry, and he was found hiding in a hotel in Syracuse. Once he was brought in, he claimed that he was innocent and that he was nowhere near the house of the Snyders during the, time, during the crime. However, that was immediately disproven as they had his bus ticket stub that he himself had disposed of. Henry, after being faced with the stub, broke down and confessed, but as the same as Ruth, he also blamed her for the death of Albert. By the time the case went to trial, both Ruth and Henry hated each other, I'm assuming because they were both snitches, and they continued to blame one another. Anyway, Ruth and Henry would, t would try separately. During Ruth's trial, she claimed that Henry coerced her to convince Henry of setting up his life insurance, and he also tried to convince her to poison Albert by sending her poison solutions that she had refused to give to Henry, um, to Albert. Anyway, supposedly this infuriated Henry. So basically, Ruth wanted the jury to believe that she was unaware that her lover wanted her all for himself. When questioned about the affair that she carried on with Henry, 
Ruth tried to place the blame on Albert, claiming that she was an attentive and loving wife, but that her husband would cheat on her, ignore her and their home, and that he refused to show her any affection of love, which forced her into the arms of another man. During Henry's trial, his defense team claimed that he had always been a good citizen and that he allowed an evil woman to seduce him with fake charm and that Ruth took advantage of his weakness and the love that he had for her, but that he did not kill Albert and that he tried to convince Ruth that Albert shouldn't be killed. He then insisted that Ruth on other occasions tried to murder Albert by poisoning his drink and also with harmful fuels. fumes. He also claims that after every attempt that she told him about that he tried to convince Ruth that she was out of line and acting irrational and that she should not try to murder her husband but that she would not listen to him. Um, anyway, then he also shared that on the night of the murder, although he had lied about being present, that it had been Ruth who had delivered the blow that killed Albert. When Henry was asked about the life insurance, he stated that that was all Ruth's doing and that he had nothing to do with it. After all was said and done in court, an hour and a half later, the jury found the defendants guilty and they were both sentenced to death. Henry was executed by the electric chair on January 12, 1928. Ruth was executed after Henry at the same date of January 12, 1928 by the same means. As for the daughter of Albert and Ruth, no one really knows what happened to her, but all that is known is that she lost both her parents to a senseless crime of passion. Henry maintained communication with his wife and is rumored that she forgave him for cheating on her and for any involvement that he could have had in the murder of Albert. So, now let's discuss this. Do I think that Ruth really was the person who killed Albert? Yes, I do believe that. I do believe that she really tried to convince Henry to kill Albert. And I can see, well, not that I can see, but like reading the entire story, I can kind of gauge on my own that I do believe that she did finish him off. You know, I, I think, you know, with her trying to eliminate herself from the entire story, like she really tried to play like a helpless victim. While Henry, on the other hand, he obviously he played as a victim as well but he didn't take himself fully out of the story nor did he deny what he did to albert so for that reason alone i do believe that ruth was the one who delivered the blow that killed albert now do i think that both parties deserve the death penalty yes i as well do believe that they deserve the death penalty so yes i do believe that ruth was the leader of the two obviously however henry is his own person and if he really felt that ruth was out of line trying to convince him to kill albert then he should have detached himself from her he should he should have stopped hanging out with her he should have stopped having an affair with her and he should have told her flat out listen you're talking crazy and there's no reason that we're talking about killing Albert but he didn't do that and to me that makes him just as equally as guilty as obviously Ruth so for that reasons no I I, I I not no yes I do believe that they both deserve the death penalty um I think they're both to blame and you know what even after Henry hit Albert with the window away he didn't stop he didn't say listen we can't do this forget about it no he allowed Ruth to pick up this window weight and to hit Albert about his head and kill him. So I do think they're both to blame and no one at one point or another said, listen, this is a bad idea or oh, let's not do this. And you know what? If Do the crime, do the time. So you know what? If at that time it's the death penalty, then goodbye to you both. Now, you know, more in detail about Ruth. Do I think that Ruth loved Albert? Come on, no, I don't think that. Maybe she cared about him a little bit at one point or another, but even that's debatable because she, you know, obviously was extremely extreme. <laughs> you know, here, how could she love him? You know, this is the father of your daughter. You're looking for someone to 
kill him. No, I really don't think you know that she loves him at all. I, I think she, yeah, I don't think she loved him at all. I think, you know, it was maybe more of a business deal to her that to have a husband, you know, obviously someone to support her. But I don't think that she loved Albert. Um, I honestly maybe think she was, you know, because she had numerous affairs. Obviously, I don't talk too much about who are the other men, and that's because I obviously don't know. But she had numerous affairs. And I wonder, was she weighing out this, these men wondering, like, hey, who who can I talk to 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 convince them to kill my husband. And I think that's where she was at, that she was at a place where she was debating, where she was more looking, seeking for someone to kill her husband. You know, I also don't think that she loved Henry. I think she really used Henry because, you know, she immediately confessed. And the moment that she immediately confessed, she she wipes herself out of this whole story. Like, oh, this guy's so in love with me. He wants to be with me so bad that he killed my husband. And oh my God, I'm such a loving, caring wife. And then she flips it on her husband as well on Tron and says, oh, you know what? I, I was a loving wife, but he pushed me to kill him. Um, I could say Albert pushed her to hate him and ask him for a divorce. Yes. But to kill him? No, I don't think that. Um, and the way that Albert was obsessed with his ex fiance Jesse, I honestly think she knew that before she even got married. Maybe to her it was, um, I don't know like a game for her to be able to keep Albert, you know, be, and not let Jesse marry him. So that's that. I also don't think that Ruth loved her daughter. You know, you're whether you love your husband or not, you sat there and you came up with something to kill the father of your daughter. And without and without thinking one of consequences, without thinking of long-term damage, you know, like she didn't think her daughter was going to miss her father. I, you know, I, for that reason, don't even think you love your daughter. You're willing to hurt your child. That's hurting your child. So no. Now, going into Henry, do I think that he loved Ruth? No, I don't, I don't think he loved Ruth. I think he was more like obsessed or infatuated but that he loved her no i think he he did allow himself to be manipulated but you know what if you're going to be with other people then you sometimes need to stand your ground and say you're not going to convince me to do certain things like you know you have to draw the line somewhere whether you are a confident person or you're not confident you should have a line that says you're not allowed to cross that line and obviously henry never obviously drew a line in the sand um, do I think he loved his wife? No, he didn't love his wife either. And not so much because he had the affair, but because he he altered her life completely. You know, this woman, I'm sure, came out in the newspaper during her time, like, oh, this woman's husband killed his lover's husband, so whatever, you know. So, you know, you on top of that, you embarrassed her. I, I don't I don't think he loved her and if he did you know then he should have said sorry not killed Albert and try to work on his marriage when he realized like wow like I'm in something crazy what am I doing but he didn't he really didn't so I don't I think Ruth and Henry loved themselves and you know what they were only sorry because Albert was dead and they got caught to be honest that's what I think you know, now going back to Albert a little bit, do I think that he deserved to die? Honestly, no. But Albert didn't deserve to die. He deserved for Ruth to say, listen, I want a divorce. Get out of my house and you figure it out because you sat here and look what you're putting me through. You know, you're obsessed with this dead woman. You want to put photos of her in my house. You know, you're taking time away from our family. That's grounds for divorce. But to sit here and for him to be dead no i really don't think that i do i i do think that albert and ruth were both to blame in their loveless marriage and that's personally what i think now do i believe that first of all do i believe in the death penalty and the answer is no for my own religious reasons no i don't believe in the death penalty I just don't want to go to hell for other people's doing. So I don't want to sit here and kill somebody I don't know or send, or send somebody to their death. And I don't even know them. And, and then I have to like get to the golden gates and it's like, you know, why did you kill this person? You know, I, so for that reason, I don't believe 
in the death penalty. I just don't want to go to hell for other people's doings. I'm sorry, I don't. And that's just my personal belief, my religious belief. I don't know what's yours. I'm not telling you to think like me. I'm just saying definitely. I just don't want to go to hell for somebody else. You know, want to go to hell for my own doings if I do go. But, you know, you get it. So anyway, now, do I, am I against the death penalty? You know, when I hear certain crimes that I hear, like, people doing things to children, you know, I don't, I sit here and I go, you don't even deserve to walk on the face of the earth. And in that aspect, I'm not mad at the death penalty, but you know, at the end of the day, those who decide to send people to death, like, you know, does that mess up your sleep at night, you know? And that's, like I said, that's the only reason I don't like the death penalty is because I think the death penalty really affects those as well who are not involved in the crime at all. It's a, it's a heavy burden to carry in your back. It's something heavy to lay in your bed and think about. I lose sleep over if I didn't wash a plate in the sink. Imagine that I'm signing a piece of paper saying, oh, this person's gonna die tomorrow or five years from now. I don't know. I think it's a is a it's a heavy load to carry. So, so no, I don't believe in the death penalty. But I guess I don't frown upon it too much. You know, depending certain crimes and what people do to other people. But you know, so anyway, that is all I have on this murder. On this white nail polish that I used, I'm gonna tell you white nail polish is very finicky. People who polish their own nails will tell you every time I apply white, it maybe cracks, it does, it looks imperfect like by the third day. Can I make nail polish last seven days to 14 days? Yes, but it like I said, it doesn't look perfect. I am going to say that the polish I'm using in this video, the Revlon Early Bird, it's amazing. I love it. It's actually one of my favorite nail polishes. I recently purchased um four white nail polish one being this one and out of all of them that i tested this one is my favorite however i am going to try to see if china glaze has a white nail polish and if they do i'm going to buy it obviously and then i'm going to tr on five nails i'm going to try five different brands of white and and let you guys know which white i think is the best which white held on the best and I'll obviously put them on different fingers on both hands. And the reason for that is because sometimes you use your index finger more. Sometimes you use your thumb more. So, you know, you'll see in the video, like I'll put obviously out the nail polish on one hand and then I'll just put the on the other hand, I would just change the fingers up just so we can see how it really plays on on the hand. But that is my plan. Well, anyway, my friends, that is all I have for you for today. Thank you for joining me in today's video. I hope to catch you on the next one. Until then, you all take care of yourselves and remain safe. Bye.